In this video, we look at the intricacies of the Duelist role and what it takes to carry any game. When you think of what it means to hard carry your team to victory, the Duelist agents are always the first to come to mind. Whether it's Reyna snowballing out of control, or Jets single-handedly dismantling the defense, Duelists have the highest carry potential in any given game. But how? What separates the best Duelists in the world from the average player? Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host Sergeant Frost here, and in this video, we're going to be discussing everything you need to know about the Duelist role. This video will be covering the role foundation, the goals of a duelist, and the keys to climbing along with the micro and macro do's and don'ts. Let's get right into the video. Duelists on paper seem like a really simple role at first. All duelists are trying to find an entry point onto bomb sites for their team to attack. While on defense, they are looking to contest dangerous high value neutral areas of the map to help kickstart a retake. Okay, simple enough, right? However, when you are playing a role in Valorant that requires you to be aggressive and create openings for your team, your decision making needs to be the best not only on your team but in the lobby since one wrong move can not only cost your life, but your team spearhead their attack. You might be thinking, can't any agent just spearhead an attack and create space? The thing that makes duelists so different from the other agent classes is their nature of their utility. It's a common misconception that duelist utility is inherently less valuable than something like an initiator, but the reality is different since otherwise we'd simply see teams playing five initiators. It is true that a duelist utility does not directly help their team get kills like a Silva Dart or a Fade Eye would but it's the selfish nature of their utility that allows them to entry and be aggressive so effectively. Duelists need the ability to be creative and work on the fly, so utility that works fast and requires little setup is extremely important and valuable in any duelist kit. The best duelists know how to evaluate risk at any given play and decide what is going to open up the map more for their team. No other agent class is able to have this much solo impact. But on the other side of that coin, if duelists aren't getting kills and opening up the map, they lose almost all value. There's never really been a point in time in Valorant's history where the game's meta felt like, oh man, I have a Jet or a Reyna on my team. It's almost always been, I really hope my Jet and Reyna are good. That alone explains how impactful the role can be. So how do you learn? Well, we'll tell you all about that in just a second. But first, we have to let you know about our all new Pro Guide subscription. For just $8 a month, you get access to everything from coaching to exclusive content made by the pros. If you're curious, make sure to visit our website ProGuides.com. And now, let's dive further into what makes the best duelist players so successful even at the highest level. Duelists were born to be aggressive and pave the way for their team's success. Almost all players refer to this fact as the term creating space. But what does this really mean? All creating space means is getting your team past difficult choke points. This doesn't always mean getting kills or even getting first bloods. All this entails is being the first one to make a move. A fantastic example of what I mean is Jet's smoke dash combo. When Jet executes this play onto a bomb site, does this have anything to do with getting a kill? Not really. All Jet is going to do is take space away from the enemy team while being a distraction they can't ignore. For instance, let's say we are playing Breeze and Jet is doing her job correctly by entering on the site. Before her Vandal even fires a bullet, she is going to use her aggression to put the enemy in a tough spot. They need to decide whether to put all their attention on the Jet who is currently relatively safe inside of her smoke, or try and fight her teammates running in behind her. This is creating space in a nutshell. So what do the best players do to capitalize off these scenarios? At every single rank, one factor stands alone as the most important for anyone trying to win games on the duelist role. And of course, that's being mechanics. Mechanics is an extremely broad term that not only includes aim, but movement, ability use, crosshair placement, and much more fall under this category. Aim for a duelist is the most important aspect of their play because it is essentially what dictates what a player can and can't do and how many fights you're able to win. Being able to chain kills together and work quickly is what being a duelist is all about and good aim enables that. Not to mention, you could end up playing a situation completely incorrectly by hitting a couple nice shots and save your life or win a round. So in lower elos where players tend to not play optimally, good aim helps punish the mistakes most commonly make. If you're determined to become a duelist god, it's always a good idea to start consistently working on your aim and to have training routines. Good aim isn't something that people are just born with. It's forged through consistency and a lot of practice on tools like aim trainers and deathmatch. If you want to become a better aimer, you need to put in the time and effort to do so. Don't just boot up aim lab one day and expect to be radiant the next, but instead take a realistic approach where you try to improve gradually and work on your weaknesses. We spoke about how a duelist utility is unique in Valorant and is inherently selfish to help them make new plays. So knowing how to extract maximum value with this utility is vital. This is where creativity comes into play and how players develop unique play styles within their role. Agents like Jet, Reyna, and Raze have their most success fighting in areas of the map considered neutral. Your neutral zones are areas where neither team starts the round with control over. Utility in the duelist role is split between two main classes. You have your movement duelists and your flashing duelists. Their names are pretty self-explanatory. One side's utility is based around movement while the other side is based around flashes to make plays. 
The flashing duelists tend to be easier to learn, with the exception of Yoru, and they are pretty straightforward with their playstyle. Phoenix and Reyna are fantastic for lower elos and take little time to gain a good understanding of how they function. While the movement duelists are a bit harder to master, but tend to be the stronger class since their abilities give them more overall options. In some situations, a flash isn't very helpful for trying to survive or make progress into a position while movement is always valuable. Trying new routes of attack and thinking outside the box helps determine the impactfulness of duelist game to game. Games where it feels like your team can't take any space and is getting destroyed all around the map should be assigned to duelist players that they need to change their approach. The more games you have on these agents on the same map, the more consistently you will find and create these openings for your team. It's a good idea to keep your agent pool small for this fact. If you try to play every duelist in the book, you're going to have a hard time finding consistency since you aren't putting yourself in various situations with that character. The best way to go about your agent pool is to look to play 2-3 characters you think are fun and try and always play them on the same maps. If you love Jet and Raze, for example, try and pick them on maps where they are the most successful. So maybe Raze on Bind and Split, and Jet on Breeze and Ascent. Just make sure that you also know how to play at least one controller, as you don't want to run into a game without smokes. This is so that you can learn what entry styles and plays work best for you and learn from the mistakes in your gameplay on a map-to-map -map basis. You want to have comfort picks where you play the duelist role since everything is rooted in confidence. Having a duelist that lacks confidence is basically like not having a duelist at all. Don't get me wrong, whether you're new to the game or have been playing for years, you are going to have bad games. It's human, there's nothing wrong with locking a duelist trying to learn and messing stuff up. The most important aspect of bad games is to ensure you are learning something from every loss and that you are trying your best every game. Confidence concerning anything is built through time and consistency. Duelists need an aggressive playstyle in nature, and confidence really helps you continue doing your job well. Speaking of doing your job well, it's a huge advantage to know what the common mistakes duelist players run into at all ranks. No one is perfect and misplay happens all the time. It's all about how you change your approach and learn from those mistakes. The first and biggest mistake players make when playing duelists is lack of communication. I know we just spent all this time talking about how duelists have a selfish playstyle. However, this doesn't mean your teammates can't give you an almost unfair advantage while trying to make space and look for frags. Initiators are a duelist's best friend on offense and defense since they provide information. Let's take a scenario where Jet is trying to enter a bomb site, say B site on Breeze. If you get your Sova to drone or dart, information gained can be used to maximize your utility's value. It can keep you safe and help reduce getting unlucky when checking 50-50 angles. The reality is, is that sometimes your teammates aren't going to be willing to work with you, but it's way more likely they will in most cases. The second most common mistake duelists run into is overheating. Overheating can be summed up as pushing your advantage too far and giving your life for no advantage. Confidence is extremely important for a duelist, obviously, but once players get the first entry frag then hit an awesome shot on the next guy, many think that they can take on the world and overextend. Your job is to fight for important areas of the map. Once your job is complete, you need to know how your win condition changes. On attack, your first step to winning a round is taking a bomb site. Once you make that space for your team, your goal or win condition changes to making sure the spike blows up. Knowing when to tone back the aggression is just as important as knowing when to hit the gas. Think about how much harder it is for the enemy team to retake a 4v3 or 5v4 situation since trading results in a win for your team and not theirs. Our last big mistake we're going to cover is impatience from the duelist class. Aggression is crucial, but if you have a bad feeling about a bomb site, you get smoked off, or you know you are pressuring a site that could be stacked, don't be afraid to call the take off. Most rounds in rank Valorant, especially in lower elos, end before even the one minute mark. If you feel like this is how it is in your game, slow down the tempo and get a read of the enemy's position before committing to a bomb site. Taking in information and making educated guesses on what side is weakest should be at the forefront of a duelist to-do list. Don't make your job harder just because your whole team is outside of one bomb site with more than a minute left. Now that we know what makes a good duelist and some common mistakes to try and avoid, what are some of the keys to climbing? In a perfect world, your whole team is communicating and your initiator is revealing every enemy in your path and basically handing you kills. But in solo queue, I'm sure we all know this isn't the case a majority of the time. So what are the keys to climbing? The number one aspect of climbing is of course the one aspect of a game that you have 100% control over, yourself. You want to make sure you have comfort picks for your role on every map. The sooner you build that confidence and know how to position, it opens up room to be creative and take over games. So make sure your agent picks are agents you enjoy playing and perform well on the specific map. The second key to climbing has to be communication. I really can't stress it enough how much a positive attitude and teamwork impacts a player's win rate. The duelist role thrives off of consistency and upping your communication skills that will help you gap your opponents every game. Our last key to climbing is to not try to unnecessarily outplay your opponent. Try to punish their mistakes instead. Players under the rank of Immortal and realistically even Radiant are not always going to be making the optimal plays. So if you try and set up intricate set plays or try to 1v5 a game without your team, most of the time you're going to end up overextending and throw the round away. To round out the video, let's summarize what we covered. 
Duelists are the epitome of aggression and tearing down the enemy position. Agents like Reyna and Jet are best used when a player is a mechanical god willing to push their skill to the limit. The utility encourages a selfish playstyle, but is still extremely important since they need to make calls on the fly for their squad. While it is true their class is great for solo queue because of their individuality, players take the role to the next level with good communication and team play. Knowing how to play your class of duelists is crucial to understanding good positioning and decision making. Both types of duelists are perfect for carrying games, but movement duelists have more options and are harder to play, and they have a higher skill floor and ceiling. The most important thing I want everyone to take from this video is that learning a role like a duelist is challenging and you will have mistakes. Even if you have a few bad games, learning from those mistakes is what counts and if you're consistently looking to improve, you will be carrying your games in no time. With that being said, that's all we have for now. Thanks so much for watching. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and I'll see you all again in the next one.